Friends, while I got y'all on the line, I think it's some things we definitely need to discuss today. What I really wanted to get into today, friends, was the true backstory behind Lake Lanier. Now, I did a TikTok. So if y'all friends with me on TikTok, y'all seen my video on it and it was very short. It was only three minutes. And I feel like it, so much more time is needed to discuss this because it goes deep. And people continue to go to this lake and swim around, which I have no idea why. Um, disclaimer, today's content is going to be a little heavy on the soul and on the heart. So if you are sensitive or triggered, feel free to click out this video. Everything I'm saying today is for educational purposes, friends. I just want to let y'all know what really be going on because a lot of the time people don't know um, exactly what happens down at Lake Lanier and what happened in Forsyth County in Georgia. Um, so we're going to take it back. I'm going to try to include as many pictures as I can. If y'all listening to this on Spotify, you just have to come watch the video on YouTube to see the pictures. Now, why these folks keep swimming in the water? I really don't understand because in the past four years, since 2018, 2018, friends, there have been 40 people who went in the water and didn't come back out. If you understand what I'm saying. Mm? Why are we still going in there? In four years, they say since 1950s that it's been over 700 people who went in there and didn't come back out that is wild why is it why does that happen and then there's also been about 50 boating accidents that have happened where the people went on the boat and didn't come back off all on lake lanier so what does that tell you people seem to think that this lake is haunted is it haunted is it cursed well, we're gonna go back we're gonna go way back so we can try and get to the bottom of this. Now, there is one rumor, y'all, that I found out about where it says that there is a lady of the lake. Now, this is supposed to be a ghost that people have seen on the lake. Child, I don't know. I looked, tried to find some pictures and all that. Couldn't find anything. But there have been a lot of sightings of her. And they say that people who went in and almost didn't come out said that they felt like they were being sucked under the water. Like they were being pulled down. Now, that's very possible scientifically because there are still buildings. 60 foot trees under there because this lake is covering a town It's covering multiple areas that were towns, but one main town called Oscarville. So I don't know if the lady of the lake is a true thing, but I'm gonna tell you all about her. So they say that back in 1958, that this woman was driving her car across the bridge, going across Lake Lanier and she lost control her and her friend and they crashed into the water apparently of course they didn't come back out of it a year later she was found right actually i'm sorry a year later the friend was actually found and when the friend was found she was not it wasn't until 1990 that they actually found her car at the bottom of the lake they said she was about 90 feet down now this lake apparently go 160 feet deep Whew, which is crazy being that it is a man-made lake yeah, it's a reservoir. That is Atlanta's drinking water. They drink in the bathing water comes from Lake Lanier. So people seem to think that it's her, but I think it goes further back than that. So we're going to go back to the late 1800s. So if y'all know during that time, uh, slaves were free in 1865 and they were free to go do whatever they wanted to do. The only problem was is they didn't have no land, um, didn't have nothing to do. Um, we were promised 40 acres and a mule, but they didn't get that. Not very many. Only a few got it before the president came and said, absolutely not. So in 1865, it was pretty harsh to free other slaves. And what happened after that is slaves became sharecroppers. And sharecroppers is another word for slave. Okay, so now that we got that understanding, basically those sharecroppers worked to live on the land and they just cropped the, the they sharecropped, they sharecropped the land from the owners and the landlords. Um... And that is that was the way of the world during that time. So that went on and continued all the way up until the mid early to mid 1900s. During that time, around we'll say the late 1800s, they formed this town called Oscarville. Now Oscarville was in Forsyth County. Um, it was predominantly white, but there were some blacks that lived in that town that owned land. They actually owned their land. Um, there were some sharecroppers as well, but. There was a bustling and moving and shaking amongst the blacks, if you will. And they were coming up on what we would consider wealth. 
But then something happened in 1912. Now, all the way up into 1912, everything seemed to be okay besides the typical, you know, that you get here and there. But in 1912, this woman was um, SA'd. And not only was she SA'd, she was also sent on to glory. And during that time, if something like that happened to a white person, they automatically assumed it was a black person. Even if it wasn't. Even if you had cold, hard evidence pointing to somebody else, they just immediately targeted the black community. And that's what happened, friends. They targeted the black, the black community. And they initially blamed four black men for this. There was no evidence saying that these black men had done anything. In fact, when they got these men into custody, they tortured one of them until he admitted to doing it. And I don't know about y'all, but if somebody is inflicting pain upon me and doing all this crazy stuff, I'm probably going to say I did something I didn't do too. Because what else am I going to do? Let them do this to the point of sending me on to glory? So that was just the unfair reality of most black people during that time. This is 1912. You know? So... At that point, on that same day, they had a jury of all white peers come in and find these four men guilty. The same day that they arrested them for the suspected sitting to glory of Macro, they found them guilty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the next day was supposed to be the sentencing, but on that night, Robert Edwards, one of the accused, um, was actually lynched. And what they did to him was terrible. They beat him, drug him around town, strung him up to a tree, and proceeded to use their pow pals to completely destroy him. And to me, that was just uh is I, I can't I can't even explain it, friends, how I feel about that. It just makes my heart feel heavy. Um I can't believe people would do stuff like that. And still do stuff like that for somebody who was innocent, you know. And I would say that they're innocent because they just picked these guys out. And again, we got to think about what time we're living in. Um, later on, after Robert Edwards was lynched, the next day they did they then sentenced the other guys, and that was by hanging. So they didn't make it either. You have this situation that's unfair to. The men involved. That kicked off a whole series of events in Forsyth County and Oscarville um, where the Night Riders came along and they made all the black people leave the town. That is wild to me. Made them leave the town. There's a story of a man saying that his family had to leave the town. And when they got to the bridge, they had to either swim in the Chattahoochee River or not come out of the Chattahoochee River, whichever they prefer. But the night Riders weren't going to let them stay. They had to keep going. And then, of course, the night Riders and the families of the night Riders took the black people land. Everything they worked for, everything they had done, they took it for themselves. And there's actually an example of this with the Bagley family in Forsyth County. Now, the Bagley family is actually a woman alive today. Alive today. Whose grandmother was two years old when the Night Riders came. And they had to leave. And they had 60 acres of land that they paid taxes on. That they owned. Do you know how hard they probably had to work for that? Land that they paid taxes on. Gone. That land today is among the wealthiest real estate in Forsyth County. Not to mention that Forsyth County is the richest county in Georgia. That's sad. And people wonder why this lake is so-called haunted. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of evil that went on in this town. How anybody could sit up with a straight face and feel like it's all good. It's just part of history. It just happened. No, 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 no. These people had to be scared out of their mind to see a militia of men coming on horses, throwing bricks through the windows, setting churches on fire, telling you to leave. 
Could you imagine being chilling in your house 9, 10 o'clock at night? You get a knock at the door, somebody banging and bamming at your door, your front yard on fire, and they're telling you you about to leave. You need to get out of your house. You can't take nothing with you. You just have to go run in the dark. So that happened. Shortly thereafter, of course, the town became all white. There was no black people allowed in that town. And you can see that on the census. In the 1910 census, you have 1,100 black people in Forsyth County. 1920 census. Okay. Y'all can see it for yourself on the screen. In the 1920 census, they found 750 of those 1,100 black people in neighboring towns, but not in Forsyth County. And that's still about 400 people missing. So where did those people go? Are, were they still with us in 1920? We do know that their land and their homes and their items, their possessions, their belongings were taken. And then this ends up being a very wealthy real estate town. Do you know what that could have meant for those families that they still own that land? So let's not get off topic, friends. We're going to go back to the, to the matter at hand, Lake Lanier. So in the 1950s, the United States Army Corps... Um, Something like that. They decided to build a dam and make this a man-made reservoir for water supply in Atlanta. The only problem with that is there's still a racetrack down there. There are still buildings. There are still 60-foot trees down there. There are still graveyards. There are still homes. They left it all there and just let it fill up with water. Now, during the building of this lake, they say that 20 cemeteries was moved. Now, friends, I don't know how y'all feel about it. And maybe y'all know something I don't know, but I don't feel like they moved 20 cemeteries. I don't think they went through and dug them people up and moved them because it was going to be covered up in water anyway. Why would they go through the trouble of doing that? And half of the people, they probably didn't even know where their families were and where did they move them to? And not only that, friends, divers have actually gone down there and seen that there are still tombstones down there. So which ones did y'all move? Did y'all just move the body, not the tombstone? Right. Because who you fooling? It ain't us. Maybe certain cemeteries were moved, but I'm pretty sure that the black cemeteries was not moved. And nor did they care about them. And now people go there and they swim on it. And they get their boats and stuff. And they say the most common cause of going away from here on Lake Lanier is boating under the influence. I think people need to understand when they drink and what that's called. Alcohol is called spirits. Hmm? This is water. Alcohol is called spirits. Everything happens for a reason. I believe there is divine reasoning in everything. Divine meaning in everything. Why are people drawn to this lake? I don't understand. Um, why people continue to go out there? I don't understand. But I do feel like water has memory. I feel like there are spirits that are unrest there in that town for the people who were hanged and lynched wrongfully. Um, I don't think there's a right way to do it, to be honest with you. I don't think it's a right way to just go and take someone's life. Um, but wrongfully. And I think that there is a lot of evil, a lot of spirits. Because I don't, real, I don't think that people realize that when the devil comes to you, a demon, whatever you believe in, it ain't going to come to you with a shirt on to say, I am the devil. I am a demon. Look at me. Get prepared. I'm on the way. It's not going to come like that. It's going to come in the form of a good time, things that you like, you know? And then after looking back on the situation, friends, y'all probably going to be like, dang, that was a trick. That was person wasn't meant for me. That was wrong. Nothing really comes with a bow on that says I'm the enemy. You know, nothing comes with a bow that says this over here is just evil, especially when it's dressed up like a good time. But I think people need to be well aware that there's a lot of unrest at Lake Lanier and you shouldn't go out there. And there was one incident in December of 1964 where a family, two adults, five kids was going across the bridge. They also too crashed off that bridge and all seven of them perished that day. But Lake Lanier is not only eerie and really having a dark history behind it, but there's something to say about those people who have lost their lives out there. It's almost as if the evil that was in that town 
during the night riders is still there. What about the ancestors? What about the people who were the 400 people that's missing? That's not on the census in 1920. What about them? What if they were saying that no, they weren't going to leave all the hard work that they worked for? And then maybe the night riders sent them to the upper room. Maybe they ain't quite make it to the upper room because they are at unrest. Well, my good friends, hopefully I ain't got y'all up in too much of a tizzy with this one, but I'm gonna call y'all back later on. Bye.